start with a couple of good long, deep in and up breaths. And try to sit comfortably. You're going to be here for an hour. So try to sit up straight. Think of relaxing all the muscles in your arms and legs. Start with the toes and work up through the feet, the legs. The muscles in all the different joints can be relaxed. And start with the fingers and do the same thing up through your hands and the arms. Try to breathe in a way that feels healing and comfortable. Because the breath is not just the air coming in and out of the lungs, it's also the energy flowing through the nerves. And if the energy flows in strange directions, it's going to be bad. It's going to be uncomfortable. As you get more and more sensitive to how the, the body feels when it's breathing, you'll begin to notice that there really is an energy flow. It's not just something made up or imagined. It's there. It's just a question of becoming more and more sensitive to it. As you get more sensitive to it, you begin to realize that you've been breathing in some ways, and some of the energy flow in the body has been very un unhealthy, it hasn't been good for you. So think of everything breathing together. When the breath comes in, it comes in through the nose, but also through all other kinds of spots in the body. It can flow down the nerves in a way that feels relaxing. Or if you're feeling too tired and you want a little more energy, you think of the breath energy coming up. And you find as you get more sensitive again that you can manipulate these things. This is really important because the mind needs a comfortable place to stay. And also needs new habits to how it deals with the energy flow in the body. Because all too often the energy flow is at the mercy of your greed or your lust or your anger. When you get angry, you'll notice the body feels different from when at normalcy. When you feel greed, when you feel lust, it feels different as well. The energy is flowing in different ways. And we don't know how it happens. It's just there. When you meditate, you're backing up a bit and you begin to see, okay, this is how the energy flow gets started and this is how it can build up all kinds of unnecessary tension or a feeling of blockage or a feeling that the different parts of the body are working at cross-purposes. What you want is a sense of the energy flow. The whole body feels good and it's all in harmony. And you want to be able to maintain that. It's in the maintaining that you develop your mindfulness and alertness and concentration. So take some time to study this feeling of the body as you're breathing in, breathing out. And notice where you're causing yourself unnecessary stress. One of the analogies for this practice we're doing here is it's medicine for the body and medicine for the mind. We're doing healing work. And some medicines are quick. You take a shot and the disease is going to go away. Other times it takes a long time, like the cream on a rash. You put the cream on the rash and then you leave it there. You don't put it on and then wipe it off, because it's going to take time for the cream to work. And it's the same with the quality of your awareness. You want to be able to balance your awareness so it actually is healthy for the body and healthy for the mind. And the energy flow in the body gets healthier and can soothe a lot of the different wounds you've got. I mean, we picked up wounds from not just physical wounds, but also you know, mental wounds from things people have said and done to us, and then habits we've picked up. And that those are the worst ones because we wound ourselves again and again. Sometimes even just the way you breathe is wounding. So it's good to learn new habits, to be a true friend to yourself, to be your own doctor, to figure out what kind of energy the body needs right now, what kind of energy the mind needs right now, and figure out how the breath can provide that. Because we're trying to put the mind in a good place. 
because as those chants we had just now, you noticed it was again and again, we're the owners of our actions. We receive the results of our actions. And so it's important to figure out, well, what are we doing right now? Is it going to lead to good results or bad results? And the quality of the action is going to be very much determined by the quality of the mind. The quality of the mind is determined, uh, determined by how you feel here in the present moment. If you're feeling like this is not a good place to stay and you want to run away, what kind of mind is a running mind? It doesn't see things clearly. And it's not really in a position of strength. It's very easy when you're running to get pushed over. But if you're standing still with a good, solid stance, you can see things clearly. You can look very, very much in detail at things around you, because you're still. And you can detect even little bits of movement or little bits of things that you wouldn't have seen. If, if you were running, it would be just a blur. And if you're staying here with a sense of well-being, you're much less likely to cause harm to yourself and harm to other people. Because it's when you're feeling ill at ease that you tend to do unskillful things, hurtful things. And then it comes back at you. It's like a boomerang. You don't like it, so you throw it away again. It comes back at you again. What you're going to be able to do is develop a state of mind that can take whatever's been coming back from what you've thrown out, yet not react in an unskillful way. Sort of break that cycle. And when you're feeling good and nourished inside, it's a lot easier to think about the well-being of others, so you don't want to harm them either. So this is putting you in a really good place, feeling at ease in the present moment, the blood is circulating well through the body, the energy in the nerves is flowing well. And it heals a lot of old wounds and it helps you to refrain from creating new wounds by unskillful thoughts, unskillful words, unskillful actions. So as you treat these wounds and care for yourself, the benefits spread out to other people too. So take some time to really get to know how the body feels from within and how the energy flow can be directed. Sometimes we force it too much, Okay, then you have to no learn how to notice, Okay, when are you forcing it too much? So that over time this becomes a skill. The more skills we have in life, the more opportunities for happiness we can find. This is a skill that many people overlook, getting in touch with the energy flow in the body and using that sensitivity to create a really good place for the mind, a good home for the mind, and to cut through a lot of the old cycles of feeling ill at ease and then doing something really unskillful that's going to come back and make you feel more ill at ease. Here's a place to cut it, right here in your awareness of the present moment. Try to make the mind as solid as you can here in the present. When the Buddha was giving meditation instructions to his son, one of the first things he said was, try to make your mind like earth. People throw disgusting things in the earth and the earth doesn't react. In the same way, you want to get your mind to be non-reactive. There will be pains as you meditate and there will be feelings of discomfort and sometimes the breath will get very much out of balance. Just learn to be patient with it and allow things to settle back into balance. Because this process, training the mind, getting sensitive to the body in the present moment, it's going to take time. As with any really good skill, it requires that you do it again and again and again. And then as you do it again and again, you begin to see things you didn't see the first time. You begin to see connections, what's causing what and how you can change the causes so the results get better. It's when you develop that kind of patience and the sensitivity that goes with being here again and again. 
you begin to realize there are a lot of potentials here, simply by being here with a breath in the present moment and using this as a place where the mind can really settle in with a sense of well-being. So that its actions, the things it chooses to say and do and think, are actually going to be healing actions. Healing for your own wounds, healing for the wounds of other people. Because a lot of us live in a world we've been damaged a lot, and we've been damaging other people too. So try to settle in right here and get a sense of bringing things back into balance. So the actions we do will be actions that we don't regret, the actions that we're actually proud of having chosen to do. That's part of our dignity as human beings, is that we can live in difficult circumstances, but we don't have to be a slave to them and just react to them. We can rise up above them. And that ability is what makes life worthwhile. 